Good day to you, my dear brothers and sisters. This is Father Ron Sandoval, SVD, and I welcome you all to this moment to Jesus, the Word of God. Today is March 6, and the Church celebrates the first Sunday of Lent. Samahan niyo po ako sa ating pakikinig at pagninilay sa salita ng Diyos. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you, and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders. And bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And leaving set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does Scripture say? The Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the Word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and reaching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for forty days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him alone, shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, it also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. 
When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Matagal-tagal na panahon na tayo hindi nagkakaniig sa ganito. I would like to welcome you once again. Last Wednesday, the Ash Wednesday, we have started already our journey, 40-day journey of this season of Lent. No? Actually, again, 46 days yan. But the six days are Sundays and therefore, we do not count those Sundays. Sundays are always celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. And so, with this, we only counted the 40 days instead of 46, so 40 days. 40 days, bucket Because it's patterned after that 40 days when Jesus was in the desert to be tempted by the devil. Um, siguro magandang theme in this, um, in the gospel, in the readings that we have for today, and also for this season of Lent, is how really to deepen once again our faith, how to renew and how to deepen our relationship with Jesus. You know? And the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, um, is giving us tips on how to really deepen our faith. The first tip, no? Um, the faith that we should have should be dependent on our experiences of the goodness of God. Faith that is based on such kind of experiences, our own experiences, is really strong. So our faith is not only or must not only be coming from what we have heard, what we have read, these are also sources, but the strongest basis for our faith is the one that we have experienced, the experience of the love of God. And in the first reading, that was the experience of the Jews, no? a first-hand experience when they, as a people, were delivered or conquered by the Egyptians. They were maltreated, they were uh, subject to abuse, and they were imprisoned. No? They were brought into slavery in Egypt. But these people, after praying to the Lord, the Lord heard their prayers and they were delivered. No, It was, of course, we know that. They were delivered uh, from the slavery from the Egyptians. And they were brought to the Promised Land. So it was 40 years of traveling in the, in the desert, going to the Promised Land. And so that was a first-hand experience of those people. And they... they that, that one, because of the good thing that God has done to them by delivering them from the Egyptians, it has brought them to the faith, to the Lord. Yun. Sa ating buhay, mga kapatid, I know that we have also have experiences of God's love. Try to, try to think of those. Try to think of those experiences when we have really felt how we were loved by the Lord, how, how this love became really very, very concrete in our everyday lives. Because these are the things that will really deepen and strengthen our faith in God. Second, Moses is also telling those people who were not there or who did not experience what the ancestors had experienced, the memory of the experience of these ancestors. Of course, um, the ancestors have narrated to the next generation all their experiences. And Moses is telling these people to recall to bring to memory what was told them by their ancestors. And those memories can also strengthen our faith in God. They are not our experiences, but it was told to us. And when we remember those experiences of our ancestors, of God's goodness, again, then for them, that is a source also of strengthening of the faith. Sa atin siguro, concretely, what I can say is, yeah, <laughs> What we have learned about Jesus, what we have known about Him, we were not there 2,000 years ago. We were not able to experience Jesus. But the apostles, for example, they were able to experience that. And they turned over to the next generation all these experiences. Kaya nga, our church is um, apostolic church because our faith is based on the witness of the apostles. We were not there definitely 2,000 years ago. But the apostles were there and they were able to experience Jesus. They were able to listen to his words. They were, they were able to witness the, the miracles that he did. And then it's in their heart, but it did not remain with them. Some of them wrote, that's why we have now the scriptures, the Bible, and some were um, 
passed on orally to the next generations until our time now. That's why we have known Jesus. That's why we have known what happened before, although we were not there. And we were only trying to remember and to recall all of these experiences. Very, very concrete para sa akin is the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a prayer of worship, no? first and foremost. The Eucharist is not for teaching. The Eucharist is complete even if the priest will not, the priest will not preach or deliver his homily. It's still a complete Mass because first and foremost, it is worship. But it is also a memorial. A memorial we bring into remembrance, we bring to the present moment what happened and what was told of us. For example, what happened in the, in the Good Thursday, Holy Thursday, when this Eucharist was instituted. No? And so we are not killing Jesus every time because sometimes we hear non-Catholics saying, you Catholics, you kill Jesus every time you, you celebrate your Eucharist. We're not killing him. Jesus died once and for all. What we're doing in the Eucharist is to remember, to recall, no? to bring back into our memory what happened on those days. And all the graces that were given during those moments are brought also to the present moment whenever we remember and we recall. And that is the Eucharist. No? If you listen intently to the prayer of consecration, the words uh, remembrance and memory uh, are all in there. Do this in memory of me. No? Uh, this is the very word of Jesus. That's why we have to do the Eucharist in memory of Jesus. So yun po, uh, remembering all of this can also deepen our faith in our God. So, now, a third, a third tip is also in the first reading, the, the Israelites um, responded to this love of God. And how did they respond? Gratitude. By, the, by, by thanksgiving. And how did they do that? Because these people are already in the promised land. Sabi dito sa last part of the, of the first reading, they were already enjoying the land and then they were tilling the land and therefore they are bringing the fruits of the product to the Lord. No? They give back to the Lord part of the produce. Ito po yung origin ng ika po, if you know ika po, ikasampo ng, ng tinanggap ko galing sa Panginoon. No? Or 10% of, of um, my salary, 10% of what I have, I bring back to the Lord. I bring back to, to the church or to the community. No? Um, tayo medyo, we Catholics are not so much into this practice no, of giving tithes. Sana all. Sana nagbibigay. But I know of people, especially those members of charismatic or covenanted communities, they really give tithes or 10% of what they have earned. It's a sign of thanksgiving. It's a sign of gratitude to the Lord. Everything is from the Lord. And so, yeah. I give part of that back to the Lord as a sign of my thanksgiving. It's maybe another way of saying, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Di ba lagi natin sinasabi? Everything that we receive from the Lord is not only meant for us. It is also meant to be shared to others. And so we share to others in the name of the Lord as a sign of our gratitude to God. No? And so kayo na may kakayahang gumawa nito, I hope that you can do this. Not necessarily through the church or, or through the communities and people don't need to know that. But in yourself, you are giving back to God in His name to the people who are in need. Part of what you have earned, part of the graces that God has given to you. Gawin po natin yun. And the more you do this, the more you experience God's love and you say thank you, it also deepens your faith in God. No? Kasi to say thank you is to recognize to recognize and to honor what God has done to you. And so, counting your blessings can deepen your faith in the process. No? Now, in the second reading, it was mentioned by, by Paul to the Romans that all these steps in the faith are in the heart and in the heart. So faith is in the heart and it can really justify us. But this faith, when it is spoken through the mouth, can really save us. What does this mean? The blessings that we have received from the Lord is not only meant for us in the heart. It has to be shared through the mouth. We have to tell other people of the goodness of God. We have to share to other people how God has loved us. Very, very concrete. Evangelization or mission, whatever you call it. So as members of the missionary church, the Catholic church, we should be doing this also to others. Telling people of how good God is to me. 
and you are enriching other people but in the process once again you are remembering all God's goodness and so it deepens one again your faith so these are the things that we should be doing also in this 40 days Lenten season now we go to the gospel which speaks of the temptation of Jesus the context in here Jesus was uh, just baptized and he heard the voice of the father you are my beloved son to whom I am well pleased and then he was filled with the Holy Spirit and with this he was sent to the desert again to be tempted by the devil and so he did not eat for 40 days and 40 nights and after it was over it was told here of course he was hungry he was hungry and precisely at this moment when the devil came to him and he said the first temptation if you are the son of God command these stones to become bread in the first instance, it was a very beautiful command, no? I mean, stone turning into bread. Imagine if all the stones <laughs> will be converted to bread. How many people could be fed with this, no? In the community, we are having our Pabigas program. Can you imagine how many mouths could be fed if the stone could be converted into rice or to bread? So, but, pero merong catch eh, merong catch. If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, then command these stones to become bread. The devil is not actually bent on having food for the many, no? But he is actually telling the temptation in here is that I will not depend on the providence of God. What should come out is my own power. What should come out is my own talents and my own abilities. No? In other words, ang opposite ng hungry is greed. No, I mean, you can relate the two. So the first temptation is greed toward material possessions. Yun eh, yun eh. It's good to have these things, the bread. Of course, it's, it's a necessary, necessary thing, necessity for life. But if in the process you are sideswiping God and you are only promoting yourself because of your own capacity, then that, that's the temptation that can happen to us. The answer of Jesus, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. And then the devil departed. I mean, the devil brought him to the second temptation. He was shown, he was shown of the riches of the world. And then he said, this is all mine. And it is for mine to give. I can give these riches to you if you are going to adore me. Ayan. And temptation, if you adore the devil, you will receive the riches of the world. So, if you accept this, it's as if saying, you forget your God, no? Uh, change your allegiance. You worship me, not your God. No? In our modern days now, these riches of the word can be said as the four P's. Prestige, power, position, possession. For many, this has been their gods. These are created things. And you exchange these created things with the Creator. Adoring and worshiping these created things and not the creator it's the simple meaning of idolatry the greed for prestige power position and possessions and this became their gods and so that is the greatest temptation also in our time now ang dinidios na natin ay yung kapangyarihan yung yung kayamanan yung ka, 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 kasaganaan at uh, tagumpay no uh, kasikatan Nasa sideswipe ang Diyos. That is also the temptation for all of us. Kasi the call of this world is very, very strong. Eh? But Jesus says, it is written, you should adore your God only and you should serve Him only. No other gods. Not even the earthly gods, not only the earthly riches. The third temptation. You know? um, Jesus was brought to the parapet of the temple and then He is saying, let's, let's test God. Let us test God who says that if you jump, you, you, will not, you will not be hurt because the angels will come to the rescue so that you will not be hurt. And so it's God who, who said that. Let's see if he will really do it. Jesus jumped, no? Yeah, but Jesus says, no, you should not put your God into test. The devil here is testing not only Jesus but God himself. And sometimes we also have that kind of attitude, no? We, we abuse God. <laughs> we abuse God. Parabang si God is a vento machine that we just point and we simply ask God to, to give us what we want. No? We, 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 became God, we make God our follower or our slave. No? Now, do not put God into test. 
Do not put God into test. So these are the three temptations of Jesus, no? But, okay, this is the point. How did Jesus respond to all of this? First, He responded simply by using the Word of God. It is said, <laughs> it is written, and then the verse, no? It is written, man does not live on bread alone. It is written, you should, you should worship only God, and only God you should serve. It is written, you should not put your God into test. Ano gusto sabihin ng Panginoon dito? Have, have a knowledge of the Word of God. Because this Word of God is the only, it can really de- defend you from the temptation. This is your protection. Just like Jesus, you can use this. So He is really inviting us to, to, to be well-versed of the Scriptures, to be well-versed of the Bible. That is a Catholic Bible, that is ours. And so, dapat alam din natin kung ano nandiyan. Especially those, especially those words spoken by Jesus. Now, of course, the Bible is Bible, no? But, of course, with, in comparison to the words of the prophets or the words of the apostles, the words of Jesus Himself has priority. We should learn those also. For example, the three, the three words that is written here as the words of Jesus. It is written, but, and then He told the biblical verse. So, yun. Sana'y yun ang ating response na we use the Word of God because we know the Word of God. Sana ganun natin. Second, second um, thing we can learn from Jesus, Jesus did not argue with the devil. So, do not argue with the temptation. Do not, do not um, converse. <laughs> Kasi matatalo ka. Surely matatalo ka. And so, immediately, just like Jesus, say the Word of God and then go away. Go away. Do not discuss it with the tem- with the devil because the the chance that you will lose and you give into the temptation is very very strong. And then third, Jesus was really faithful to his decision to to go against all these temptations. Sana tayo din. Sana tayo din. Remember in the last part of the gospel, when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from Jesus for a time. <laughs> for a time, babalik at babalik uli yung tukso. And again, when the, the time, maybe you were able to resist the temptation now, but the next time that this the same temptation comes to you, the devil has already brought 10 other devils, much stronger. And therefore, hmm, maybe a, a strong, a strong um, temptation or for you, really, to, to succumb to that. And so, be firm. Be firm in your, in your conviction, really, to turn away from these temptations. Tandaan natin, when you are being tempted, you are not yet sinning. Kasi this is the usual question of so many to me during confession. Father, I was tempted, I was tempted, am I already sinning? No, not yet. Not yet. But once you give in to the temptation, then that's the start of sinning. Jesus was tempted, but He never sinned. No? And so, parang ganun lang. So, let's have Jesus as the model for going away for all the temptations. Kasi temptations will always be there. We cannot run away from that. It will always follow us. It's all up to us to defend ourselves, just like Jesus to all the temptations. And that is my wish for all of us, that in these 40 days, all our activities really would somehow bring us much closer to Jesus and deepen our faith and love in Him. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit inspire our prayer as we bring before the Father the great needs of our brothers and sisters of the church and of the world. We shall say, Hear us, Lord, and have mercy. That the Lord may give us, Christians, a deep and strong faith, which we profess not only with our lips, but we also live in by our deeds, we pray. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy that we and all those caught up in material tasks and concerns may learn to seek other food than bread alone. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy, that we and all those who work to increase their influence and power may learn to seek the Lord and adore Him alone. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy, that we and all those who are tried by temptations may remain faithful to God and answer His call to serve God and people. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy, that we and all those surrounded by suffering, injustice, and illness may be made more sensitive by the Lord 
to the needs of people and love them more, we pray. Hear us, Lord, and have mercy. Maybe in silence we can bring to God our personal needs and concerns. Loving Father, you stood by your Son in his temptations. Sustain those who hope in you and keep them in your love now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming pong salamat sa inyong pakikiisa sa ating pagninili ng ano ito. Hanggang buli po, hanggang sa muli. Have a nice week, my dear friends. Ciao!